No, I'm so excited to speak with you, Tracy. I have been following your work for a bit now, and I think you are so amazingly hilarious. But also, thank you for coming to horror because you're so good in this genre. Have you been a fan of horror? I love asking people about their history with the genre. Were you a fan or did you need to do research for this movie where you're like up at four in the morning watching a bunch of movies? I would say both. I've been a horror fan my entire life. My dad, my sister and I, that's like maybe our favorite genre together. So we would watch all of the horror movies, but I never thought about writing horror. So the reason why I said both is because there's a difference between being a fan and then when it's time for you to do your own, you're like, oh, I don't really know how to do the genre. So I still had to go back and rewatch all of the movies seen before mm -hmm. and kind of watch with a studying lens and think about like, oh, how are they constructed and what does the structure look like and characters and all of that stuff. So I rewatched a lot of movies to try to figure out how to do it myself, but it, it didn't feel like work because I love horror. Mm -hmm. I really do. No, that's interesting. And I was going to ask originally, was there any difficulties transitioning from comedy to horror? But I actually want to ask you the opposite. What did you enjoy about it? Was there something you found out that you were like, oh my God, I love crafting jump scares. Was there something about the horror formula you ended up falling in love with? Yeah. You know, the funniest thing that I've learned is that horror and comedy are very similar. And it... I always wondered about it because I saw so many people in comedy make that transition. You know, the, the probably the most well-known example is Jordan Peele, but um, even the Barbarian guy, like <laughs> that was, mm -hmm. you know, a, a comedy person transitioning to horror. And you, you start to wonder why. And then when you delve into it, you're like, oh, they're constructed very similar in the sense of comedies are very much about set pieces and broad jokes happening. And especially the kind of comedies I do, I don't do like, you know, cerebral comedies. I, I do very laugh out loud, broad, silly, you know, big box office comedies. So those you have to have a big joke or a big something happen like every few minutes. And in horror, you have to have a big suspenseful thing happen or a big scary moment or jump scare every few minutes. So I'm so used to within the storytelling, leaving space for, okay, something has to happen here. Some a big joke has to happen here. And then with a uh, horror, I was like, a suspenseful thing has to happen here. Whereas when you're doing like just straight up dramatic writing, you're not concerned with those big moments as much, but they're very similar in how they're built. So it actually made it easier for me because I had that comedic background. Well, that's interesting. That speaks to one of my favorite actresses, who is Regina Hall, who I feel lives in the world of, I mean, scary movie. Like, she's balancing both genres so well than with Master recently and, you know, you, you know, film you wrote Girls Trip. I think she hits all these notes so well. So you spoke to that perfectly that I, when one, I need Regina Hall in a blackening. Three, two, seven. I don't care, but I need her here soon. <laughs> she would, oh, Trust goodness. Me. We, we've already, like, <laughs> put it on the vision board. So, because she's so good. Yeah. I'm about to throw it on my own vision board for you guys, because <laughs> please. Sure. No, and I, that, that speaks to my next question. Women in horror always are hit or miss. Either they're, like, the most well-written characters ever, or they're not. And then you go to Black women, especially, you know, what, Brandy, and I still know what you did last summer. Like, I love her, right. but did, was yeah. that something you were conscious going into this writing of like I want to handle my women better than I've seen in horror in previous especially slashers mostly I never thought about that in particular but what I will say is that because I'm a woman I always try to treat my characters with depth so that was just kind of an organic part of it but you know to your point I I will say I still enjoyed all of those horrors, but there's a lot about women in horror, if you if you look, you know, too closely, that objectifies them a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you kind of kill them in even sexual ways sometimes and, and have them in situations where I, I feel like, I don't know if women would actually act like this, because I think that women are 
I mean, this might be a controversial thing I'm about to say, but I think women are smarter than men sometimes. Um, <laughs> Who would have thought that? Sorry, <laughs> but I do think that, and sometimes I would be like, they're not acting as smart as I feel like women are. So I don't know if I came in with that idea, but I always write with, let's try to make them fully realize smart characters on some level. So maybe I, I indirectly accomplished that. No, you did. I mean, I love these characters, which I, it feels like I don't want to ask you to pick a baby, but was there a, a character you specifically enjoyed writing for, male or female, in this? That, that Was that you like, look, I love writing for everyone, but was there someone you're like, these jokes, I, I love these? There's probably three characters, but I'll knock it down to uh, Grace's character, the biracial one and um, Shanika's character because I think she's just the most fun and so ridiculous yeah that is Shanika's the one I wanted to be like my friend like but you do that well it's like with girl stuff I like I want to be friends with these people maybe not all of them yeah um like Dwayne me and Dwayne need to talk in this movie sometimes <laughs> but no I love these characters and uh, yeah you do make them feel so real which mm -hmm. I I think that's hard to do especially within horror it's like oh, wow, these are human beings that exist outside of this movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's what I love about friendship stuff is that you get to have a, a lot of different personalities, but hopefully people will find somebody within that group that they either identify with or you just laugh and you want to hang out with that person. And I think that this group has enough personalities where that can be accomplished. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, I actually spoke with Tim recently about this, and he said you had a great answer for this. I was like, look, is there any tropes within the Black community or, you know, within the horror community that you wanted to touch on? And he said, Tracy said, we're going to have many more of these. So I would like to do more. I am putting that into the world as well. But is there specific tropes, stereotypes within both communities that you're like, that is on the blackening too. Like I, we have to touch on oh. this. Like I, there's so many that I feel like I would love to see. Like I always like love the, the black community and swimming mm -hmm. conversation that I'm like, please. I, I told, joked with Tim that I want to see the blackening like Jaws edition on right. the boat. And I'm like, there's so much to have there. Yeah, there's, there's a lot. I mean, not to give too much away, but I've been pitching what a sequel could look, look like. And for me, Black people traveling is an interesting arena. Um, <laughs> because we still bring our very US like sensibilities abroad. And I think that's really interesting when there's a language barrier, when you don't know where you are, but you're, even if you're in a, because like with, the with the blackening they were in a cabin in the woods and they were isolated mm -hmm. but i was like we can still put them in a foreign territory and there's other people there but if you don't know what anybody's saying and you're relying on just like instinct and intuition on who is good and who isn't i'm like there, mm -hmm. there's something really interesting about that and just not having access to certain like things that things you could easily you. get at home yeah Ooh. so i would put them in a different area where they know nothing and know no one and there's no one they can really call and if you did call for help like you can't really communicate effectively that so. is ooh, that is good i i also joked with tim that i would love to see the blackening in space i i think w hilarious no and my final question for you real quick is is there a movie that you would pair with the blackening as like a slasher horror movie double feature what would you put with the blackening to give you like a perfect sleep overnight of good horror movies or good horror comedies. Ooh. You know, that, that's actually tough because even in coming up with like the tone of this movie, we couldn't really find the perfect comp for it. It's so original. It's right? such it's an hard. original tone. You guys nailed something so, that's why I was trying to answer my own question and be like, what would I put with this? Yeah, the closest I would say from oh that's okay the two the two but I would probably go to Scream. I would just say the original Scream I'd pair with the Blackening, um, but also the original Saw was really interesting and really original at the time when it came out, and 
the reason why it was between those two is because saw with you know the game aspect of it and, and people not knowing why they're there but there is a personal reason why they're there and then with scream it's just so meta and pop culture and fun but so i'm gonna go with scream because it's more fun yeah saw, but i do really like saw as well I love them too, and I just watched all of them, and I'm like, wow, these movies are incredibly way more diverse than I remember the Saw yeah. franchise being. I was yeah. like, wow, I remember. This is great. I actually really enjoyed my rewatch of them. So, no, thank you so much. Now I'm going to pair up the blackening with Saw and Scream. I'm going to do a triple feature for you. So thank you it's so much great. for speaking with me. Of course. Thank you. And I'm so